So in this simple circuit, I have two LEDs. We've got a blue one and a green one here. They are connected to pin eight and nine of the header commonly known as port B in the Arduino IDE. I've got a 320 ohms resistor between each of them because these headers are five volts and the LEDs are 3.5. And then I've got it connected to the ground on the bottom of the board just to kind of keep the board stable. So in order to understand how to program the Arduino ports in assembly, we need to read the data sheet and see how they actually work. So I've got up the data sheet here for the Atmega 328P, and we can see that the port B data register is mapped to memory offset 0x25, which is hex 25. So what's gonna happen is this memory, the byte at this uh, offset in memory is mapped to the port. So each, uh, each pin of the port, we've got eight pins in total. We're using pin uh, zero and one, which are eight and nine on the Arduino. So these are gonna be the first and second bit of the byte. We can set them to zero for low or off, or one for high or on. So all we're going to be doing to signal a port is we're going to write a one to that bit of the byte in memory. So we would write 00000011 to offset OX25, and that says set all of these ports to off and these two to on. And these two are our LED ports. But before we can do that, we actually need to set something called the data direction register. What this does is it says, are the pins input or output? So they can actually be input, so it will write a one to the register if the pin is high, or a zero if it's low, but we actually want to be outputting voltage, so we're going to set all of these to zero and these two to one, which says all of these ports remain as input and these two stay as output. So in order to write the memory, we need to know two instructions. We've got LDI, load immediate, which fills a register with an immediate value. So we could do say LDR, uh, LDI R01, and that would set the register R021. Then we've got our STS instruction, which stores directly to the memory, and that will take a address and a register. So it could say something like STS OX25, R0, and that would store the value we put in R0 into the memory location OX25, which is actually what we're going to be doing. So I'm gonna just write a simple program which will allow us to choose which LEDs will be triggered. So here we have our empty template assembler application. So we're gonna start off with the LDI instruction, which is going to look something like this. We're gonna use register R24, which is register 24. So we're gonna do LDI R24, which says load our value into register 24, and then we're gonna set our value to this. So the 0B says that this is a binary value and it's followed by eight bits, which is a byte of binary data, allowing us to set each bit to either zero or to one. Next, we're going to save this into the memory location which maps to our port header, which is OX25. So to do that, we're going to use our STS instruction, OX25 and then R24, which says store the value we've just put in R24 into hex location 0x25. And then we're gonna do this again for the data direction register, which if we go back to our documentation is at 0x24. So we're going to do LDI R24, the same value, and STS 0x24 R24. So now we're just setting location 0x25 and 0x24 to zero, which is not what we want to do. Remember, we needed to set the data direction register, which is OX24, to set ports uh, 0 and 1 to output, which are ports 8 and 9 on the port B header. So we're going to put those to 1, which says output, and leave the rest as input. And then again up here, we're going to set the two end ones to 1, which is going to trigger both LEDs. So just so the code doesn't actually run off into empty address space, we're just gonna put an infinite loop at the end and then jump back to it with the R jump instruction so that it just loops infinitely and doesn't run off into empty address space. Now we can build our program and it will flash the Arduino when we hit play. So we're just gonna go ahead and flash the Arduino which should result in both LEDs coming online. 
And as you can see, the blue and green LEDs have lit up. Now if we go ahead and set one of the bits to zero, we will find that one of the LEDs goes offline. If we set both bits to zero, they both go offline. And then we can bring the green LED on its own back online by setting the bit corresponding to the green LED to one. So that's all for today. If you like my videos, consider supporting me on Patreon because I'm currently not a YouTube partner, so I can't make money on this platform. Uh, every bit of money goes towards me making more videos. I'm hoping to do a little bit more hardware stuff and I'll be doing reversing as usual.